jack it up. Hurts keeps, Hurts cuts, Hurts has the first down, and Jalen Hurts might have just put it away for the Eagles. Touchdown. Tyrese Betsy and the Sixers are going to win this game. Joel Tuck turned around in the lane. Another 30 and 10 performance for Joel Embiid. Hurts connects with Devontae Smith. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to Two and Five Scoop. I'm here with uh, my buddy Asher. Um, so Asher, how you, doing? how you doing, Asher? Good. A lot better now that the Eagles are uh, starting the season one and zero. Yeah, one and zero, baby. A little bit um, scared, but here we are. Yeah, I mean, I, what what was your thought on the game, Asher? I mean, I I have very mixed feelings. Even though it was a win, I have just very mixed mm-hmm. feelings. I mean, just. Like we said going into that game, I think both of us knew that that game was going to be a little too close for comfort mm-hmm. just because that seems to be the way that Eagles season openers always go. Mm-hmm. I did say that the Vikings – or not the Vikings. The Lions were going to give us a scare in the first half. I had my hats flipped. They gave us a scare in the second. But, yep. you know, same idea. Yeah, really, same idea. I think we both kind of agreed on the fact that opening up – I think we've had – Pretty good luck as far as at home, how we do it at home Mm -hmm. beginning of the season. But on the road, it's a different story. Um, I think last year we we were in Atlanta and we had no problem with that. But outside of that, um, we we struggled on the road. So I think we both know that it's going to be a little bit close. Um, But I think the the Lions are just a very gritty team as well. I think the hard knocks might actually do them good this year. I touched on on a TikTok that I made for those that might follow that. Um, But the grit, the, the, the Lions are just a really, really gritty team, and the credit goes to them for, you know, making a, a three-point cost contest. But as far as my thoughts go, um, I'm, I'm feeling pretty indifferent about it. I'm not excited. Nothing that I saw really opened my eyes. I was like, oh, my gosh, this team is, like, going to blow us away. It's kind of really going to live up to the hype. It was kind of just like, okay, I mean, this is kind of what we saw last year. We just have A.J. Brown now. Right, yes. You know, it was more just like, oh, cool. Right. A.J. Brown, who went off for 156 yards. Mm-hmm. But, no, I forget his stat line off the top of my head, but he went off. Yeah. Monte Smith disappeared. He didn't have anything. I, I don't even know if he got any targets. Um, but my biggest concern on the offensive side of the ball, there's plenty of concerns on the defensive side of the ball, but my number one concern on the offensive side of the ball is how many RPOs they were running. Yeah. Did you notice that? No, the, every I think it felt like every handoff in the first quarter was an RPO, and you mm-hmm. can just you can tell because it's so slow. Because mm-hmm. because Hertz has to look up, he has to he has to you know he has to read the defense, and it just makes it more difficult for the running backs. And you could tell, like, well, we just, yeah. we're not getting the ground game ground game going outside of Jalen Hurts himself. Yeah, and and what really pissed me off is how many times Jalen Hurts, you know, did things with his legs. Granted, you know, he has that gift and he can really move the ball. He's gotten he got several big first downs for us on the ground, but at the same time, it feels like a lot of what happened last year is he would drop back in the pocket. Again, his pocket presence is abysmal again this year. He he never sits in the pocket. He's always rolling out. He's always looking to take it and run. And he just felt like he sat in the pocket for a second, looked up, and his first option was available, he would just take off to the right. Yeah. Like, his first know. option being AJ Brown. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't look at Devontae Smith. I think I saw a couple of plays where Dallas Goddard was even open. I yeah. saw Devontae Smith was open. and Austin Scott got pretty wide open uh, down yeah. the side on one play. Yeah, exactly. And Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts didn't see that. And that kind of the, – the being able to read the defense, that's a flaw that was noticed before. But it's – now that we're kind of looking out for him to improve in those ways, I feel like it's even more of a glaring flaw in his game. Yeah, I mean, I we we've specifically called him out. Not only just us, any anyone who is an Eagles fan has specifically said if Jalen Hurts doesn't get better this year, you know, this team is not going to live up to expectations. Mm-hmm. And I I said last week it, I'd rather see us lose and Hurts show improvement over last year than us squeak out a win and Hurts look the same old Jalen Hurts as last year. But now he has AJ Brown to throw to, mm-hmm. and. That's kind of exactly what happened, unfortunately. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I don't want to come off as a Negadelphian, 
you know, I don't know if you ever heard that term. You know the no. term? Really? So that's like your classic Philly fan that's always like, doesn't matter the outcome. Like we're always bashing on our team. Like yeah. we won this week. We started 1-0. You know, a team like the Giants who finally started 1-0 this, this year would die for that kind of start. Meanwhile, right. we've been really blessed. I think almost every single season we've started out 1-0 with the exception of a few seasons. The last season I remember was 2020 against the the football team. The right. football team skins, whatever you were. Whatever they were at the time. Yeah, whatever they were at the time. But I know we gave up that 17-0 lead after the first half mm. and we lost. But what, what I'm trying to say is that we have kind of blessed, but at the same time, we have Jalen Hurts, who's kind of the storyline of this entire season. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, he has the ability to the, that first drive. It just seems like we would get to third down, the pocket would collapse, and then he would miraculously make it through the pocket and get a first down of you know ten plus yards. I, I think that happened two or three times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, line, or not the first drive. I'm sorry, the the second drive where we scored a touchdown. Yes. Yes. When we actually, the offense started looking alive. And yeah. then he said, all right, I guess I'll just do this all day. And there were a couple of times where he just scrambled out of, out of a completely clean pocket, mm-hmm. which is just not really something that a winning quarterback does. No. You, 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 he needs to work on sitting there and just like, he needs to get comfortable in the pocket. I don't feel like he's ever done that in his career. I feel like he's always relied on his legs for a lot, especially yeah. in college when you have, you know, that I'm not, I'm playing how talented those receivers are, but I feel like they don't get as much separation sometimes. So he mm-hmm. kind of expects to, you know, not many people to be open. Um, I don't, who knows why he plays the way he does, but that's kind of one of the glaring flaws on the offense that I saw. But there are some bright spots, Asher, if you want to if you want to go into that. I think there's several bright, stuff, bright spots we could talk about. Well, though, I think the one thing that really stuck out to me was four different offensive players scored a rushing touchdown. Yeah, actually, I didn't know that stat. Wait, hit. Yeah. So yeah. Hurts, Scott, Gainwell, and Miles Sanders, who didn't score a touchdown all last year, mm-hmm. all scored a rushing touchdown this week. We were the number one uh, rushing team last year. It looks like that dominance is going to continue this year. Yeah, yeah. As it much as we definitely... might want to bash Jalen Hurts after – not bash, but, you know, be concerned about the quarterback play. I mean, it's possible to just have a, have a run down the – you know, just a run heavy team and still win. But well, yeah, um, I don't want to be all negative Nelly after. No, no, I'm. I don't want to be negative Nelly either. It's just like, oh, I kind of want to see a little bit more from Jalen, and I don't yeah. want to always be stuck in that state. Like as soon as I see him, like take some really nice deep shots. Like he had a really, really nice pass to AJ Brown. Yeah. Know, like a fifty yard gain. Did you see that? It was down the. It was down the far sideline, and it, he right. had like AJ had Brown made a great loop to his back, and it was put right the egg. Yeah. It was a beautiful throw. And if I can see more of that, like more consistently, he doesn't have to like launch it, but like stop playing, don't don't do check downs, you know, none of that like little five like chipping yeah away. I want to see some like chunks. When you see that play, it makes you think if you can do that, why don't you try it more? <laughs> you just gotta grow a pair of balls, bro. You, like, you have one of the most talented receivers in the NFL now. Exactly. Like Ron he's Smith is a, it has Great hands. Quez Watkins is one of the fastest players in the NFL. Mm-hmm. You know that that op, that offense has the potential to open up. That's why we're all so excited at the beginning of the season. Yeah, and we the run game and the pass game now. That's another thing we just have to be. Um, we have to be careful with, or I'm sorry, we have to be just patient with, is because right. nothing's going to happen. Is wow, we saw AJ Brown get almost all the looks from Jalen Hurts. I feel like more teams are kind of going to be more on a lookout for him. I, I feel like he. Well, yeah, he was still considered a top 10 wide receiver. I feel like with his injury issues in the past and, like, he's – under. He, I think he was a little bit underwhelming last year as far as, like, statistically and how he played. But I think mm-hmm. – I th- what I'm trying to get to is that I think a lot of teams are going to start doubling him now. And that's going to open up things for Devontae Smith. Like, doubling, like really, really covering tight on A.J. Brown. And I think that's going to open up everything for the rest of the offense. Yeah, and I mean, we're we're not the only offense. Like this is week one. Right. You don't you don't want to overreact to yeah. Devonta Smith. I I mean, he had I want to say two targets. He dropped one, and then there was the one that he caught and it got called back. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, Allen Robinson. We we saw it. You know that stat was going around. He had the fewest mm-hmm. targets in his career in week one. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike Williams, I know for the Chargers, very talented receiver, caught one ball 
And, you know, that's Matthew Stafford and Justin Herbert. Those are very talented quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, week one, you're just trying to get a feel for for how the offense is going to be run. Right, exactly. It's week one. You know, you can't really make – I mean, how often do you see some narratives that are produced from week one performances actually come to fruition? Right. Um, I mean, I can't even remember some of the narratives that were made up last year week one because, like, it's just – it's such a long season. We have so much to play. Um, But let's touch on the defense. Um, very, very questionable play. It felt like DeAndre Swift kind of ran all over us. He could do whatever he wanted. The entire Vikings offense kind of marched up and down the field, especially in the second half on the defense. The only bright spot is that uh, James Bradbury pick six. Yeah, that was a fun play. Yeah, um, but my my concern is Jonathan Gannon and his scheme. I feel like he doesn't split enough. Um, I don't want to give him too much heat. I've been seeing a lot of um, – a lot of creators, a lot of podcasts, a lot of people who make Eagles-related content, they've been kind of lashing at um, at Jonathan Gannon for not playing Jordan Davis as much mm-hmm. and not playing blitz. But, of course, we know Jonathan Gannon. I don't think he's a very blitz-heavy play caller on the defensive side of the ball. He likes to run a lot of zone. He likes to run, run, run a lot of man. That's why we picked up James Bradbury. Right. He fits in the scheme really well. Uh, but – it would have been nice to see some pressure, some blitzing. We didn't run. I don't think we run ran many blitzes against the Lions. Yeah, and I mean, there's really not much of an excuse for that anymore. You know, if you want to say maybe we didn't have the personnel last year, now we have Hassan Reddick, mm-hmm. who has averaged you know ten plus sacks over the past two seasons. One of the more talented pass rushers in the NFL. And then you, Jordan Davis is a very, very big guy. So very large. You have the option to put him in the middle and rush maybe two guys off each side on either mm-hmm. side of them. So I, I don't know. It, it, I don't, again, week one, I don't want to blast Gannon too much. I think I feel like people are already calling to fire Gannon. Uh, I, I haven't seen to that extent. I think people are just very irritated that nothing's really changed, even with the change of personnel. Yeah. Well, the seat's getting hotter for him. It seems mm-hmm. like. Oh, it's definitely warming up. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's pretty much the story of the Eagles. We'll see what happens when we go into this week two matchup against the Vikings. But before we get into that, we made some hot takes um, last week, and we're actually going to introduce um, uh, a little game, really. We're going to make three hot takes. We're going to do two straight picks, and we're going to do one lock. And Asher and I are going to compete until the end of the season. We'll figure out what the prize is, if it's bragging rights or – Whatever, whatever it may be, um, but we're gonna get Asher. What was the scoring system you thought of? So three points for each hot take you get right, two points for each straight pick, and if your lock hits, you get one point. Okay. So there we go. So of last week, um, Asher, how did you fare out as far as your hot takes? I don't remember off the top of my head. So I had my, I did have my one hot take win. I uh, I picked the Steelers over the Bengals. Now I, we had just watched that on a Thursday night game, and I was the we saw that Rams Super Bowl hangover. I was thinking a little bit of the same for, thing for the Bengals, and mm-hmm. you know Burrow Burrow had four picks. Kind, yeah. kind of, I had him on my fantasy uh, team. I had him on my fantasy team. It was awful. I mean, he scored. He still scored eighteen, but not bad. Um, whatever. But um, one of my hot pit, hot takes also landed. I have I had the Vikings being the Packers, um, and. You know, I'm. I have a good feeling about the Vikings this year, and yeah. And I, did I, did I have Giants over Titans or Giant Giants? Who they play? God damn it! Giants did play the Titans. Yeah. Um. The, the Vikings was your was one of your straight picks because our straight picks were the same last week. Oh yeah. We both picked Vikings over Packers, and we both had the Eagles beating the Lions. So that's four points apiece. Yep. <laughs> both of our locks did not hit. Yeah. Oh yeah, our lot. Yeah, um, I had Niners over Bears, so yep. that was pretty humiliating. But it's Week One, so what can you expect? But yeah, actually, what was, what was your I went with the Broncos over the Seahawks. Yeah, my, one of my hot takes was Broncos shutting out the Seahawks. So, yeah, so that didn't um, go well for either of us. Yeah, that didn't that didn't go well. Um, but I think we're both at four apiece right now. Is that right? And then I have the three from my uh, Steelers yeah. pick. So I've got seven, a little bit of, a little bit of got, early on. Asher's got seven. I've got four. Um, 
now for this upcoming week. Shoot me your hot takes. What are your hot takes for this this upcoming season, this upcoming week? So number one, uh, we actually do get the opportunity since we're recording this on Wednesday. We have the opportunity to shoot for a Thursday hot take. Mm-hmm. We got the really fun matchup: Chiefs Chargers tomorrow. Yeah. Ooh. Chiefs are favored by four and a half. I remember correctly. Chiefs are favored by four and a half. It, you know that's a difficult matchup to pick, especially as a divisional matchup. Mm-hmm. Short week on a Thursday night, mm-hmm. but I don't. I I've just got a good feeling about that Chargers offense this year. Mm-hmm. Week one they only scored twenty three, but there's just I know Keenan Allen's out, but there's just so much talent on that offense. You know Brandon Staley's a, a pretty smart offensive mind, mm-hmm. and the the Chiefs still allowed twenty points to a Cardinals offense that was really floundering last week. Yes. So I've got the Chargers winning. I think Jay Herbo is going to put himself back in the MVP conversation this year with four total touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you got four total touchdowns for Justin Herbert in a Chargers Chargers victory over the Chiefs. So (laughs) funny thing is um, that's actually one of my hot takes. Really? I had Chargers over Chiefs. Okay. Nice. Um, So, yeah. So we both had the same hot take. So if that hits, that kind of does a whole bunch of nothing. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, My second hot take is I have the New York Giants getting to a 2-0 and start for the first time since 2015. They play the um, – who do they play? They play the Panthers this week. They beat the Titans last week, um, and they're playing a very weak um, Panthers team. I feel like the Giants are kind of – I like Brian DeMall. I've been kind of praising Brian DeMall um, being the head coach of that New York Giants team. Saquon Barkley, he went off last week. I think that'll continue once again this week, especially against a weak um, defensive line that is the um, Tennessee Titans. I don't think the Titans have a very good defensive line. Uh, I think John. I think Saquon's going to continue his dominance um, mm-hmm. against against the Panthers. The name keeps on leaving my name, leaving my mind. The Panthers this week, um, but the Giants starting two and out this year. So now with the uh, with the Dak Prescott injury, small little tangent here. Mm-hmm. Do you think the Giants could finish second in the division? I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibilities, but Dak Prescott actually, I think he's looking to return in four weeks. Is so I, I wouldn't – it's it's a little bit of a reach still for me, but um, I think the Dak injury puts the Cowboys out of the conversation for the division. I think the Eagles kind of – depending on how the offense looks, if they develop and start to really, really mesh, you know, not – just completely revolving around AJ Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's definitely a possibility. It's more of a possibility now than it was, you know, a week ago. Yeah, definitely. So Asher, you 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 have uh, your second hot take? Yeah, second hot take. Uh Saints Buccaneers this week. Tom Brady has never beaten the Saints while he was on the Buccaneers. He is 0-4 in two years. They play in New Orleans. I mean, it just t- – Tom Brady, this is probably his last year, and he just doesn't – he's not the type of guy who's going to go out with that kind of record. He's, he's not going to let any team in the NFL, especially a divisional rival, have you know that kind of mm-hmm. – be able to boast about that. Mm-hmm. He's just got that competitive fire. So mm-hmm. I've got Tom Brady coming out with a vengeance. Offense looked – Sputtered a little against Dallas, but I think they're going to beat New Orleans by three touchdowns. Wow. Okay. That's like a hot take if you know the history between the Saints and the Bucks. Right. I had to bring some context there. Yeah. But, you know, if, you, if you're just an NFL fan and you're like, oh, he's picking Bucks over Saints, like that's not really a hot take. But Tom Brady's 0 4, like you said. <laughs> um, so for me, my last hot take is the Bills, they face they face the God. The Titans. Yeah, they they face the Titans, not the Panthers. <laughs> you have the Panthers and the Titans out of your head. Yeah, I have the Panthers. I don't know why, man. I just like mess, man. All right. But I have the Bills defense um racking up five or more sacks. Um I would go as far to say seven, honestly. I really like the Bills defense. They really showed dominance against you know a potent uh Rams offense. Yeah. Um, 
And I don't the, – the Titans' offense is not impressive to me at all. Um, I don't see them having much luck. I'm not going to go as far to say a shutout this week. I'm not going to say that. But I'm going to say that the Bills' defense will kind of have a sack fest against the Titans this week. Okay. So fair to say that you're predicting that many sacks and a win. Yes. Yes. Okay. That many I'm sacks. Gonna, my third hot take is the opposite of yours. Mm-hmm. I've got a Titans shocking upset victory on Monday Night Football. Ooh. The Bills. We just we just saw a big upset uh as we were talking about earlier, the Seahawks beat the Broncos and uh and it was a little bit of a of a rock fi- rock fight there, you know. 17 mm-hmm. to 16 low scoring matchup. I think we've got a similar thing going on. Buffalo's got a very good defense. Tennessee's defense is respectable. And I just – I think the, the only way that the Titans beat the Bills is if the defense shows up and Derrick Henry just has a monster game. Mm-hmm. So I guess you can, you, can put, you can put into that hot take that the – I've got Derrick Henry for 125 okay. yards rushing. Okay. And give me two Titans force turnovers. All right. That should make things very interesting for the next podcast, depending on how things you know play out. Yeah, yeah. But change. I will say, I will say, I see that you have a. I, I know you made a point on how close the Monday night Monday night matchup was this past week, but my thing is, is that Russell Wilson just got put into the offense. I feel like they need time to kind of mesh a little bit more, as opposed to the Bills. That offense has kind of been together for a couple of years now, and I think I don't really think much is going to happen. I mean, upsets always happen in the NFL, so I wouldn't put anything out, out of the realm of possibilities, but I think it's less likely that there will be an upset this week than there was last week. Um, yeah, so that's, for my that's picks, definitely the hot take I'm least, uh, least confident yeah. in. But I think, you know, <laughs> Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. He's he's due for a big game every now and then. Yeah, exactly. And well, like every other week. So. When he's playing like, like Derrick Henry does it, in his prime at the top of his game, you know, the Titans always have a chance to win. So my picks, uh, I had Bengals over Cowboys, and then I had Chargers over Chiefs, which kind of goes, yeah. I Chargers okay, I over Chiefs. Gotcha. Chargers yeah. over Chiefs, straight pick. Browns over, or Jets over Browns goes into the hot takes. Yes. Okay. Yep. We'll put that put that on the records for next yeah. week. Or that. Yeah. Yeah. So my bad. My, my notes, I, I – I guess I like I looked over once to read it off and I just misread it. But whatever. Tell me why you're thinking Jets. I'm interested in this. Why am I picking the Jets? Yes. Um, what do you think I think that? I don't know. So, like I just you know like those weird like gut feelings you get about certain yeah. games. You know, like how you feel about you're not very confident in it, but you have like this gut feeling that the Titans are gonna pull off an upset against the Bills. It's kind of like that okay. kind of thing. You know, gotcha. it's not really that big of an upset. You know, the uh, – the I think Brees Hall is really going to emerge, their rookie running back. Um, I'm not – I mean, the, their offense isn't awful. I, I mean, their team's not bad. The Jets aren't bad at all. No, I, I, think, I think the Browns kind of – out, I would say they outperformed expectations last week. I, w- I was expecting a Panthers win, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I, I picked the Panthers win. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I don't think that Jacoby Brissett and that Browns offense is going to have that much luck, especially when they're going up a guy like Sauce Gardner. Um, he's a rookie, but still, like, you know, we'll, I just, I just have a feeling. You know, it's just one of those things. Like this week, I put a bet on the Monday night game that Will Disley would score a touchdown. This man has, not, has scored three touchdowns over the past two seasons, and he scores fourth on Monday night. Not to mention he had Junior Smith throwing the ball. Exactly, exactly. Like, you know, anything can happen, but I just have this weird feeling that the Jets are going to beat the Browns. The Browns are not going to start start 2-0, especially with that offense that they have okay. going on there. Unless Nick Chubb can ch- ch- carry them, Jacoby Brissett can, you know, do something. I don't know. We'll see. But I just have a feeling that the Jets are going to beat the Browns this week. Let me counter you again. <laughs> My lock of the week, the Cleveland Browns are beating the New York Jets. <laughs> Hammer it. Hammer it? Hammer it. Okay. Jacoby Brissett, I mean, he's a game manager. That's, I'm not, I'm not going to talk up Jacoby Brissett like he's some, some world beater. But he's starting against Joe Flacco, who's like 54 years old. 
Yeah. I don't think he's capable of moving after he takes his five step drop back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah. just like Ben Roethlisberger last year with less okay. talent around him. Yeah. So I don't want to discount the Jets when Zach Wilson comes back. I'm a big believer in Zach Wilson. I just, you know, that Jets offense just looked abysmal against the Ravens. And I think mm-hmm. two two mediocre quarterbacks, and I think the Browns out-talent the Jets in general. You know, the Jets have the talent. A lot of their guys are young. A lot of their guys are inexperienced. We talked about this in the in the season previews. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and I, I, I don't know. I've, I've got a feeling the opposite way, so – yeah, I I don't know. I just have like a feeling about the Jets, even with Joe Flacco at the helm. I, I don't. I just it's just a gut feeling, man. I just have a gut feeling. But my lock is Rams over Falcons. Okay. Um, pretty. I mean, that's a pretty hefty lock. You never know what's gonna happen with the Rams and Matt Stafford. I, I don't know. He kind of struggled against the Bills, but again, he was going against a Bills defense that's kind of ruthless. Right. Uh, and Von Miller, who is still somehow like a force at his age. Um, and then you get the, and then now he's going against the Falcons. You know, I, I think, I think the Rams going to pick that the defense. Falcons just put a pretty big scare into the saints who have a pretty good defense themselves last or uh, it looked like a pretty good defense. Yeah. But uh, it's a week one thing. It's just like okay. a week one thing. I think it's just that, that week one little magic that they get same mm-hmm. time. But, like, let's just not forget that the Falcons blew a lead in that game. Again, even without Matt Ryan. It's not a Matt Ryan thing. It's an Atlanta thing. Um, but, of course, the Colts. Don't well, on the contrary, the, the Colts actually uh, made a 17-point comeback last week. Yeah. Yep. They were down 20 yeah, and they won high in tying the game. Like, yeah. literally the most AFC West thing possible. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so – We'll mark those down for next week. Um, but to close out, we might as well circle back to the Eagles. We got Monday night, doubleheader, um, 8.15 on ESPN. We had the Vikings come into town. This is a game that I'm nervous about. I'm a big fan of the Vikings. I think they're very good. I think they're going to be pretty damn good. Um, I've been trying to tell you guys, tell everybody that the Vikings are coming for the, the, the division crown and – they came out and they beat the shit out of the Packers on, on, God damn it, what day? Sunday night? God damn it. Hey, Sunday afternoon football. Sunday afternoon. I literally have no track of time anymore. I don't, <laughs> I don't, have, a, I don't have a clock anymore. But they played a football game at some point. Exactly. Yeah, like that's what it is. They played them this weekend. But, <laughs> um, but I feel like this is going to be a difficult matchup for the Eagles. I don't – I'm not very confident in the Eagles' abilities to win this game, even though they're, they're favored by two and a half. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the first test of the season. Uh, I mean, that Detroit game really shouldn't have been a test. If, if no. you think the Eagles have the talent to, to really make noise in the playoffs this year, and the Vikings also have that talent. So, you know, what can we do against a team that is more evenly matched? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. We, if you say we played down to the Lions, can we play up to the Vikings? Let's... Right. Yeah, exactly. It's it's one of the things, and it's kind of been the story of this podcast when it comes to Eagle stuff. How's Jalen Hurts going to freaking perform? That's yeah. the. It's been the question. I think that's going to be the question for a while until we kind of see some consistent. I mean, I don't – like I said, I don't mind him taking it with his legs, but I want to see more, you know, field vision. I want him, want him looking at his options. Mm-hmm. You know, if he doesn't see something, just throw it out of bounds. He doesn't have to run it because that's putting him at risk, you know. But what, as far as my pick for this game, uh, I, I don't, I'm going to go Vikings. I'm sorry. I I have to go Vikings. Um, it's not that I don't have faith in the Eagles. I think it could be a close game for sure. But I just haven't, I, I just haven't seen enough to the point where I could see them beating a team like the Vikings. I think the Vikings are going to be one of the better teams in the NFC this year. And I just, I just don't, I'm, I don't, I don't feel very good going into this game. Yeah, no, I, I tried really hard to make Eagles over Vikings one of my straight picks for this week. And I just couldn't bring myself to do it. You know, th- this is, this is a scary matchup for sure. The, yeah. you know, you, t- you talked about how is Jalen Hurts going to perform. I, I think the bigger question this week is, can we stop the Vikings offense? 
I mean, that, for, for God's sakes, you could barely stop the Detroit Lions in the second half. Yeah, Justin Jared Jefferson Goff. tore the Packers up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he already haunts us because we picked Jalen Rager over him. Is he actually is he going to no, continue to haunt us on the field? You know what? You know what's going to happen. You know, knowing the Eagles, Jalen Rager is going to score like an eighty-yard touchdown <laughs> on like the first, first play of the game. That's like honestly, I would not be surprised. Like I would actually like just turn the game off and just like meditate for a second and be like, "What the fuck just happened?" So. Yeah. But my pick, I think we're both in agree agreement. Do we both have Vikings over Eagles this this upcoming Monday, or what? What's your what's your? I'm point? gonna, I'm gonna say, you know, Gannon in his post game interview, he he took responsibility. He he didn't say, you know, the the players didn't perform here, or they didn't do this. He said, you know, I've got a lot of strategic changes to make. You know, I've got to look at the personnel. I've got to look what we can do. And he, he, he said, you know, Justin Jefferson's a great player. We're going to be focusing in on him. How can I scheme around him? I've, I've, I've got faith in Gannon, so I'm going to I'm gonna say he makes the necessary adjustments, and I think the Eagles squeak one out this week. Really? Yeah. Uh, it is a uh, I'm just saying that that Vikings offense looked pretty pretty lethal. I the, I, I, I I'd say our offense looked pretty good, though. Yeah, I, our you know, offense. We, we still got that rushing attack. Yeah, exactly. So – I'm not saying it's going to be like not close. I think it's going to be very close. It's very much a toss up, but I'm leaning Vikings only because they just looked like a better team than us last week. Um, right. and I think, and you know, that's just, I mean, one of the big reasons it's a toss up is because it's a home game as well. We're at home. It's a home opener. There's all this hype around the Eagles. I think, I think the link is going to be rocking on Monday night. Um, yeah. That, I'm, see, I'm counting on it. I, I have like that home opener that that's what's really making me go over the edge and say the, the Eagles, you know, ride that that crowd energy to a win. Yeah. But, I mean, well, it's going to be a fun game. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I have to figure out how to stream it because I don't know if it's going to be on straight ESPN because I saw it online. It's on ESPN Plus. So oh, that's that's going to be fun. I don't know. I have to look it up. Maybe we'll play yeah, it on we'll, ESPN. We'll figure that out. You know, it's we double always up. Have the Eagles. Yeah. But um, that's gonna wrap it up this week for us right. on two and five well, scoop. Let me uh, let me get my straight picks in real quick before oh, I end it. Straight picks. Yeah, no, nothing really interesting. I've got uh, Patriots over the Steelers, so okay. you know, I, Patriots were one of my hot takes. I'm very high on them this year. They disappointed in Week One. Yeah, I'm coming yeah. back to them one more time. Don't let me down, Patriots. <laughs> Let's take that win. You know, Mac, Mac Jones, uh, I think his back hurts or something, but they said he's going to play week two. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the injury. <laughs> no. back, uh, I have a boo boo on my back, Billy. Can you give me, can you give me a smooch? No, he's got to go see Deshaun Watson. Plan. He's got to go see Deshaun Watson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me one of your 24 massage, th massage yeah. therapists. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, number two, uh, I've got uh, Colts over the Jaguars. You know, uh -huh. Col Colts disappointed last week. I, I I just think you know that they they're so much more talented than the other AFC South teams. Matt Ryan, mm -hmm. that, that was his first week on the team. Same thing with Russell Wilson. He's got to get used to the offense. I, I think that's a pretty easy pick for me. That's so there you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you pick a lock by the way? Did you pick a lock? Yep, I had uh, – that was my Browns over Jets. Oh, your Browns over Jets, yeah. So All our picks are on the record. We will we'll be coming back next week to see how we fared, you know, keep that total going. Yep. So, yeah, that will wrap us up here. We'll be back later in the week um, to go over some Sixers stuff. Uh, we're right. going to have our buddy Sean Bernard um, from PickSwap Podcast come on, and we're going to talk about Marquise Morris. We're going to talk about training camp coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, so stay tuned. That'll be back later this week. In the meantime, click the subscribe button, press the notification bell, follow us down on social media as you see them down below on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for tuning in once again. Go, birds.